Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topic today is bridges, dams, blackouts, railroads, and martial law. Unfortunately, that's what a nation that has forgotten the law of their God can look forward to. I read this last week, but it fits with the topic today. Trump warns that the fight in Gaza is coming to the United States, thanks to Biden's open border. Donald Trump is warning that fighting we're seeing in Gaza is a coming to the United States after the Moss attacks on Israel earlier this month. Millions of Americans suddenly got to thinking, uh, could that happen in America? No, it's going to happen. Somebody sent me this, which, by the way, thank you very much for your emails. We, a lot of times your emails make the program. So thank you for sending your information into the emails. This post will be attacked by the left Marxists, the trolls, Antifa, BLM, and the intelligence community. He says, I'm a 39-year-old intelligence analyst. My team's clients include some pretty impressive people, which I will let you read those names there. But he says, intelligence is never perfect. It's a messy, messy, messy business. Rarely can I guarantee the intelligence, many times just releasing it in the wild, can stop a false flag or genuine attack. But with as close to 100% confidence as possible, in other words, he can't be 100%, but this is real high confidence, what he's about to tell us. There will be multiple terrorist attacks in the U.S. I'm going to read that again. With as high a confidence as possible, there will be multiple terrorist attacks in the United States. The attacks will come in waves for the next 14 months. Okay, this is not a prophecy. This is from intelligence. And if you look at who he's dealing with here, those are some pretty impressive names. So he says hundreds of thousands of CCC, CCP saboteurs trained to attack our electrical grid. Electrical grid. How many times have you heard that? Poison our water supply. We've heard that several times. Destroy our railways, main highway arteries. Additionally, at least a million, possibly two million terrorists are already here from Palestine, Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Qatar, Lebanon, Iran, Somalia. And they're extremely well-funded. And get this, the Biden administration is working with the UN and has given them debit cards that are reload, reloaded every month. Now, what does that mean? That means that people high in our government are traitors. It means that they're actually working with our enemies to open our borders and allow people in to kill, steal, and destroy. All of this because we took, back in 1963, prayer out of the schools, and then it began to go downhill from there. We took the Bible out of schools, took it out of our hearts, our businesses, and now some 60, 70 years later, this is what you wind up with, a nation that God is about to bring down. And you may be saying, well, there's a lot of other nations out there much worse than America. Yes, but America was started to be a Christian nation. America has a constitution, and many of our documents are openly saying we're a Christian nation, and yet we've turned from our Christian God. We've embarrassed Jesus. That's the way you might say it. So he says, they're extremely well-funded, and get this, the Biden administration is working with the UN to giving them credit cards, debit cards, that get reloaded with money every month. In other words, we are funding, cooperating, and working together with our enemies to destroy our nation. Let's go on. There's more. He says, below are three links, and I'm going to go to one of them here in just a second, on articles on Hezbollah unit, what they call 910. I think it's interesting. Is that saying that they're heading to another 911, 910, 911? A sleeper cell already in the U.S. awaiting the green light from Persia to launch attacks. This just one group of hundreds here to destroy America. He goes on to say, let's just jump there. Overwhelmed Mexican alien smuggling cartels use wristband system to bring order to business. 
A mass migration surge along the U.S. southern border has so overwhelmed the Mexican cartel-associated smugglers that even the cartel have to come up with a way to keep track of them. So they're requiring their customers to wear numbered, colored, or and or labeled wristbands to denote payment and help them manage their swelling human inventory. So <laughs> even the cartels are overwhelmed. Jones said the wristbands come in colors with labeling such as a turtle or a devil face to denote, that, to denote which smuggling group moved the migrant. The bands are almost always on the left wrist. A red band showing a turtle can, can, connotes, connotes a smuggling group affiliated with the Gulf Cartel. The number on the band 3969 indicates a registration process on the Mexican side and requires the migrant to give them name, address, even cell phone numbers of family members who can be attacked should any owed smuggling fee money not get paid later. Not all migrants can afford the steep smuggling fee, which Jones says currently is $2,500 per migrant up from Mexico. The cartel smuggling groups are charging $3,000 for migrants from Venezuela, Peru, Ecuador, and Honduras. Chinese migrants, however, 5000 Russians and Arabs pay the biggest, top dollar, $9,000. Many end up agreeing to pay off the debt later. And if they don't pay the debt, they can start getting threats given to their families. Human trafficking. Either you pay or we'll come and do all kinds of things to your family. We're being told from the migrants that is that this is why it's working. That it's all because Biden is telling them to come. Now, there's been other reports that George Soros run ads on radio and TV in these other countries, many of them. He pays to run ads on radio and TV saying, Biden wants you to come to America. Come to America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. And, do all, and get rich. So consequently, not only are they bringing in the jails and also the... Um, what's the nice word for them? Weirdo wards? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if there's a nice word. We're being told from the migrants that that's all because Biden is said to come and that the perception is that if they come, that they would make it into the United States and that they were all telling law enforcement at the border, let them in. Now, here's my point. I don't want us to be in line begging for food. Instead, I want to be us in line giving out food. And so here's what I suggest you do. Go to Joseph's Kitchen. I, it's bread. I mean, I have bread for my, most all of my breakfast and my lunch is a slice of bread. You want to go to Joseph's Kitchen. What you want to do is get this machine package right here. That's all of the gizmos you need to actually make the bread. Then the supplies are like this. Food for one person one year, two people a year, four people a year, six people a year. They're ready to ship it out right now. They've got all of this stuff. They're not out of anything. They can ship it to you. And there's videos and there's also recipes to show you how to make all kinds of bread recipes. I think I would call bread famine food. In the days of Joseph and the pyramids, seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. And what was it that fed the year or the world for seven years? And the answer Wheat. Wheat. And that's what Joseph Kitchen sells. Wheat. Wheat is, uh, it, it, there's not a perfect food. In other words, one food where a person could eat nothing but this food their whole life. But probably wheat comes the closest. So recommend you go to Joseph Kitchen. Get yourself stocked up. All right. Next headline. Iran has embedded terrorists inside the United States and Latin America, the article goes on to say. Iranian Avengers, in the form of Quds Force-supported Hezbollah operatives of the clandestine Unit 910, are stationed in cities across America, set up to activate pending distant command on target lists that they have painstakingly developed over time. Iran will exact its promised 
severe revenge for the U.S. drone strike killing Quds Force General Qasem Soleimani is mentioned of the dead man's highly significant, suggestive hint. Soleimani gave a speech during which he called out the American president, Mr. Gambler Trump. I'm telling you that we're close to you, exactly where you wouldn't think we are. The clandestine Unit 19 are stationed in cities across America, set to activate pending distant command and target lists that they are all ready to go with. We know Shiite Muslims from Lebanon have been recruited and trained to live in American cities as sleeper agents of Hezbollah. Terrorist spies are routinely sent home to train in weapons, spycraft, and killing on American soil as soon as they are eligible for U.S. citizenship. Their main pur purpose is to pose in plain sight as normal immigrant family men while they collected weapons and built target lists for when they were active activated to strike court records show. Their targets tended to be Jewish Americans, Israelis inside the United States, and symbolic and pr pragmatic sites of importance. For example, after undergoing counter-surveillance and weapons training on the trips to Lebanon, one of the handlers said he had him identify Jewish businessmen in New York City, former and current members of the Israeli Defense Forces, worth killing. Karani cased a government armory in Manhattan and scoped out FBI and U.S. Citizen and Immigration Services buildings, sending video to Lebanon. He also sent intelligence on how passengers disembarked from planes at JFK International Airport, how U.S. Customs agents screened collected luggage and locations of security personnel, cameras, and magnetometers. He also located storage spaces where firearms and illegal explosive could be stockpiled. Stockpile. He was also told to buy drones, night vision goggles, and high-powered cameras. In other words, they're getting ready to attack America from the inside. You remember what Dimitri was told. The fall of America would start with an internal revolution in America started by the communists. Some of the people will start fighting against the government. That's what we're talking about here. Some of the people will start fighting against the government. The government will be busy with the internal problems. Then from the oceans, Russia, Cuba, Nicaragua, and all those attack and defeat us in one hour. The purpose of all this, he confessed to the FBI agents, was to build a capability for assassinations and attacks in the United States. As one FBI document paraphrased, he lived a double life as one of Hezbollah's sleepers, tasked to maintain ostensibly normal lives, waiting for the time when they attack. In Michigan, he operated the same model according to a criminal complaint. He too was a salaried operative dating to about to back to about two, uh, 2007. They paid him $1,000 a month medical expenses trained and indoctrinated during multiple trips back to Lebanon to kill on command inside the United States when ordered. So, since we know that they're going to try to knock out our electrical grid, if you're thinking about getting one, which I would recommend, I will send you to solarsurge.net. Joe, a good friend of mine, will help you get one. There's all kinds of different things, lots of different things you can do. Some of them very cheap, some of them very nice. SolarSurge.net, and he'll help you out there. Now, you, you realize this was all talked about in Dreams and Vision. God has warned us in several ways. I brought up one of them. August 10, 2020, Coverstone. This is only part of it. I saw elderly people being attacked because they were older, older Americans and held to the Constitution and flag. They were attacked because... They had common sense values, a commitment to Christian faith, and biblical principles. I saw these people trying to get into nursing homes in order to attack older people. Okay, so if they plan the attack on Jews, aren't you going to understand that they're going to plan an attack on Christians? Then I saw a $100 bill about the size of a flag hanging on the flagpole burning on one corner. That's a date. What is that date? Well, that is, the, oh, this is happening about the time that the dollar bill starts losing value. Well, when is that? Well, probably when BRICS comes out with its new currency. Well, when's that? January 1, 2024. 
Okay, so he was shown this four years before it's happening. So this is probably going to start early 24, probably for sure by the end of 24. People had their, on their hands, over their hearts, were crying because the God of money was being lowered. The dollar had lost its value, and it burned until only about a third of it was left. And what is that, four, five, six people seen the same thing? To the protesters, the death of the dollar was a celebration. Many people were celebrating while oh, the others were devastated and totally torn up by the death of the dollar. The value of the American dollar was dying. I heard someone playing taps in the background. Now, my guess, I think you'll agree, that's probably talking about 24, which is why I'd recommend you go to empshield.com, use the promo code PROPHECY, and get you one of these devices for each of your cars and also for your home. Now let's go to another cover stone dream, just part of it. The fourth billboard was people praying in a small church. The room was cold, dark, and they were huddled in, sh in seats, shivering. That kind of has a little bit of a date stamp, too. That's kind of telling us that this happens in the winter. Then the man I see, or the angel that comes to him, walked in and said loudly, Where's the fire? At this statement, the ten people praying while seated covered their faces in shame and looked away. He then said, Look at me and stand. And they stood. He put his right hand into the air and said loudly, Where are the Pentecostals full of fire and spirit? Now, hang on, hang on, hang on. What's going on? As Christians, we're not supposed to be going into a fetal position sucking our thumb. We're not supposed to be getting all nervous and can't sleep at night. As Christians, we know this is coming, and we should be prepared Physically, we should have some food, water, water filters, and not just enough for us, but probably enough for our neighborhood. We should have cars that run because we put EMP devices on them when no one else's does. We should be in a position to like, maybe we should have some solar. So we have electricity when nobody else does. And then we can say, come on in. To our church, come on into our Bible study, come on and, and be there to be a help. But we should also be prepared spiritually. And that's what it's saying here. Where are the Pentecostals full of fire and spirit and faith? Why are you sitting coldly and idly by while the world freezes without your fire? He's not talking about a wood fire. He's talking about the fire of the Holy Ghost. Meaning, all of this is supposed to be getting us ready to be soul winners in a time of trouble. Right now, nobody wants to listen to Jesus. I don't want to hear about God. I don't want to go to church. They don't need God. But you let a little trouble hit, and you'll be surprised how many people will start turning to Jesus. I was talking to one of my racquetball buddies the other night. He's not a Christian, and his wife is Chinese. He said, you know, I went to a Christian uh, Catholic school when I was a kid, but, you know, I, I don't walk in it today. And I said, and what about your wife? He said, oh, she's Chinese and she won't have anything to do with it. And I thought, well, you know, really the color of the skin or the blood flowing in the veins has nothing to do with it. We all can have our sins washed away by the blood of Jesus. But so many people won't even listen. So I've been praying specifically for his Chinese wife and him, that God would put them in a position and open their hearts so they get their names written in the book of life. I think that's what we're really supposed to be doing. We're really supposed to be soul winners out here. When all of this trouble hits, we want them coming to us saying something to the order of, what must I do to be saved? All right, all right, you got my attention. Tell me about this Jesus. What must I do to be saved? That's what we're looking for. All of this is to get us prepared so that we're not in a jam. We're a blessing. We're helping other people. Let's go on. Give them fire. Give them food. The very next sentence says it. Give them fire. In other words, give them the Holy Ghost, but also give them food. And stop having the appearance of Pentecostals while you deny the power you should walk in. We're supposed to be there to be an answer. Not, we should not be in the bread line. We should be 
the bread line. We should not be begging for water. We should be the one handing out the water. We should not be the one saying, okay, what does the Bible say about that? Instead, we should be the one saying, this is what the Bible says about that. Got it? He opened his right hand and a flame appeared. He blew it and embers went to swirling in the air, falling on their heads. It seemed to light oil within them and spread to their hearts. It roared out of the chest with a loud noise. Five of the on-fire believers with smoke coming out of them went out into the streets. The heads of the other five were on, but not in their hearts. The man said, You may as well just stay here, as you have nothing burning in your hearts, and therefore nothing to share. Hopefully the things we're sharing here at the Prophecy Club get us motivated enough to where we can be there. We can be a person that is sharing the gospel and helping. Share you another one. Leslie Johnson, May 2022. The dream started with Stan and I being warned to fill our car with gasoline. Immediately we went to the nearest gas station, which was a convenience store. The convenience store was full of people. Right after Stan filled our tank with gas, other cars started arriving to get gas and food. We left but watched from a distance. The store manager was yelling, There's no more gas. People were running out carrying gas, as much gas and food as possible. They emptied the store of everything. Sitting in our car nearby, we watched as people began to fist fight, push and shove. Many pulled out their guns. Several news helicopters filming overhead. The military, military helicopters arrived. Troops began repelling to the ground to get the chaos under control. That evening, we watched the chaos from a distance. But the point is, we should be ready. And when the time comes where these people start deciding that they need Jesus, we want to be able to point them to Jesus. Now, I read this one a couple of weeks ago, but I think that this is one of the most important things we've got in a long time. Uh, there's no question in my heart Chris Reed is hearing from God. He said, The dream opened up with me looking at a map of the United States. I saw around 6 million illegal immigrants have crossed into our southern border since Biden took office. And you hear all kinds of numbers, six, seven, eight million. Well, now we know, thus saith the Lord, it's six million. That's a lot. I was shown that some of these crossing are not all bad, but I was also shown that thousands of them are bad, are trained terrorists from the Middle East and China. Then the scene changed, and I was given a cell phone. I was able to read the terrorist encrypted communications, which means... These terrorists are coming and plotting and planning to be able to destroy a nation, and they have encrypted communications. There's a coordinated plan to bring terrorists to hijack the American government through destruction in America. I read the words, so goes Israel, so goes America. So if America protects Israel, America will be protected. If America abandons Israel, America will be abandoned. The news reporter continued, Israel's attack through their southern border, the same thing happened to the U.S. through the southern border. I saw jihad resurge, which was a result of the vacuum left in Afghanistan from the U.S. pullout. I read on the cell phone that terrorists were coming from the Stan nations, the nations that ended with Stan, such as Afghanistan, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, they are working in coordination with the cartels at the southern border to get terrorists into the United States. That's just what the first part of the program said. The plan is that the terrorists will locate in the United States as directed from Central Command and that they're going to be given a communication device that will be encrypted. I was again given a cell phone and I could see 12 or more dormant or sleeper terrorist cells on a U.S. map had infiltrated the two other, through our southern border. They were fitting into U.S. life in sanctuary cities. They were given contacts to like-minded terrorists and directed to connect with them upon their arrival. All of this because our God is not among us. All this because we decided not to choose Jesus. They were forming teams to accomplish destruction in communities. They were promised that if you would follow orders, the framings would be rewarded financially, and they were promised rewards in the afterlife. 
I saw 12 sleeper cells already in the U.S. They were to lay dormant until orders were given. I saw some places where they were located, Michigan, Minnesota, Arizona, Texas, the Carolinas, and northeast, the New England area, New York, Boston, and Philadelphia. So here's a map. In other words, they've got places already situated, people already situated, that can begin to attack us. The plan is to use destruction inside America to control the actions of the U.S. government and to dictate our foreign policy and our response to the events in the world. In other words, blackmail us. They would control how America would function with our defense. Our response to world events by blackmailing the U.S. government, it was this quote, if you do this, in this particular situation, we will coordinate a response. Ultimately, the final one being the detonation of, and I put in parentheses, many explosives, if the government didn't comply with their wishes, the demands were clear. In other words, suitcase nukes, just like we've been talking about since 1998. The demands were thus. Number one, don't use the U.S. military to attack or fight against Islamic terrorists. Two, continue to send funds to Iran and other terrorist states to support them in the name of foreign aid. Three, Explicit pictures, they had explicit pictures of U.S. politicians in every branch of government and threatened to release them if the U.S. crossed the red line. Four, explosions were the last step. But before they could attack the infrastructure with technological disruptions, blackouts, there's it again, blackouts again, and other technological disruptions as a mean of controlling the U.S. government, and our response and our ability to defend and go on the offensive is what we should be saying there. Now, conclusion is they also could coordinate through this technology of communications with mass shootings, mass knife attacks, or they would take hostages in the United States for ransom money. Finally, I saw detonations all across the U.S. with smoke clouds all over the map, rubble destruction, and disaster. You know, if we're a Christian and you've been listening to this program for a while, and you're not prepared, shame on you. By the way, don't say, I don't have the money. Here's what you say. Lord, give me the money. I want to be there to be a help. I want to be a blessing. I want to lead people to you. And then he will give you the money. It's his responsibility. Don't say, I can't. Say, my God can. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Introducing the Watch Prophecy Club app now available for your Android and iOS devices. Watch Prophecy Club is your exclusive home for the last 30 plus years of the best in Bible prophecy and end times information from the Prophecy Club. This app features over 100 speakers and 23 categories of Prophecy Club titles since the beginning. We are also excited to announce an integrated community feature where you can interact with other believers and Bible prophecy students. Choose either a monthly or annual subscription with a three-day free trial. Cancel anytime. Today, we live in unsettling times. Have you ever wondered what you're going to do when food is no longer on the shelves? I'm Leslie, owner and founder of Joseph's Kitchen, and I want to show you how to make healthy, homemade, whole wheat bread for only a few hundred dollars a year. At Joseph's Kitchen, Our goal is to help you live a more healthy and prepared life. Our products are ready for everyday use, but are also designed for long-term storage. Whether you are looking to make healthy, homemade, whole wheat bread, or want to be sure your family is prepared, Joseph's Kitchen is pre-packaged to take all the guesswork out. We personally test each harvest to make sure you are getting the highest quality ingredients. Are you and your family prepared for what may lie ahead? At Joseph's Kitchen, we are your farm-to-table alternative. Go to josephskitchen.com to order today. And be sure to use the promo code on screen to receive your free gift. Don't get caught unprepared. Go to josephskitchen.com now. So what is an EMP Shield device? It's a device you can put on your car and your house that in an EMP attack is supposed to stop the attack. And if you go to empshield.com and if you use the promo code PROPHECY, They give you a $50 discount. They also have videos up there 
shows you how to install it on your car and your house and everything, and it's not difficult at all. I've got one of them right here. Red goes to red, black goes to black, green goes to the car, uh, body of your car, and you just peel it off the back, stick it under there. You've got another device that goes on your house. So, not complicated. Take you about 10 minutes to put them in. So, empshield.com promo code is prophecy.